Right, so today I'm going to talk about how to set up your controller for RetroArch. Um, uh, configuring controllers is one of the, the most difficult things for people for RetroPy, mainly because there are a lot of different emulators and there's a lot of different controllers, and so it's kind of hard to, to do a one-size-fits-all approach. Um, but RetroArch is a configuration file, like it's a... Most of the emulators are set up with RetroArch, and it allows you to have your controller, uh, just configure your controller once and it will uh, be configured for a lot of your different emulators. So it it's pretty convenient. Um, there's a couple of emulators that won't be part of RetroArch and you'll have to configure controls for those individually. Uh, so in some cases you might have to configure Final Burn Alpha or Game Boy Advance. Um, but most recently those two were added to the uh, RetroArch versions were added. So um, and even our main one that was added as well. So the only one that won't have RetroArch um, would be the MuPen 64 Plus uh, emulator. And uh, so I'll, I'll go through how to configure each of those individually um, for the ones that aren't a part of RetroArch. But for the ones that are, uh, this this is a method of how you'd be able to configure your controller for them. Um, so first off, if you've got a controller and you want to make sure that it actually is registered or um, that it will actually work with your system, most will, um, so you might not have to do this step, but just in case uh, you'd like to, to make sure, um, you'll go into the terminal and you'll private, type in cd forward slash dev slash input, if I can spell right, input, and then type in ls and that will show you all of the USB um, inputs that you've got. So in my case the controller I've got set up in there that would be JS0 um, and so that shows that this first one and if I added a second one it would be JS1 um, and so on. So in order to test that it's functioning I just type in JS test JS0 I press enter so that opens up into uh, this controller uh, thing. So if I press the left button, negative, positive, up, down, right, button, A, Y. Um, so it shows that these things work. So that's good. Um, we know that it works. Um, and that will also help you know which numbers are which button. Um, and then if you look up here at the top, you can see that it is the USB gamepad that's plugged in. That's the name of it, so that's kind of important to, to remember for later on. Um, so you want to exit out of this by pressing Control c And then uh, now we want to actually configure the controller now that we know it's working. So we're going to do that through the setup script. So cd back to home, and then do cd, capital retro pi, set up, press enter, and then sudo for full start forward slash retro pi underscore setup dot sh. So you press enter. All right, so then you'll go down to option three, setup, and then to 317, uh, register RetroArch controller, press enter. And so you need to make sure that only one of them is connected just so it doesn't confuse the inputs uh, when you're putting in a new uh, controller. So just got to make sure we're ready. Um, it's going to go pretty fast. So you just want to um, just make sure you've got it, got it ready to go. So I'll press Enter, and then I'll press B button, Y, select, start, up, down, left, right, A, X, left bumper, right bumper, um, and then I don't have any more buttons on my controller, so I'm just going to let it time out um, and let it finish. And uh, once it finishes, we'll go into the actual file that it's saved as, um, and then we can further um, edit it from there. Uh, most recently, they just added hotkey support, so with a lot of them, it will by default put in hotkeys, and hotkeys are basically a combination of keys you'll put in to do uh, certain commands. So if you needed to exit out of your emulator or in do a save state or load um, outside of the actual in-game saving, you can do like a basically like a flash save, like right where you're at. So like if you have a really hard part in the game you're going to, then you can save right there. And if you die, all you have to do is just 
press the hotkey to load it right back to where you were. So it's a little more efficient, um, unless you're into the whole like retro gaming and want to play with one life, then you know more power to you. But for those of us like me that aren't very smart or very quick with gaming, then it makes it a little easier for us to actually beat the game finally. So anyways, now that it's done, uh, we'll go to that file. It uh, was added as usbgamepad.cfg. So I'll show you how to get to that. So you press enter, it'll take you back to the original setup script. Just go back to cancel, cancel, see you back to home. All right, so in order to find out where that is, you've got to type in cd forward slash opt forward slash retro pie forward slash emulators forward slash retro arch forward slash configs. I think that's about all right. And press ls list. So that gives you the list of all of the controllers. Um, by default, uh, a lot of people have already added some into the source code. So for a lot of people, their uh, configurations uh, will already work just out of the box. So you can just plug your controller in, it will auto detect it, and it works just fine. So it's like Xbox 360, um, iBuffalo control, I think, has actually been put in there as well. So if that's something you're using. So you might not even have to be doing this. Um, if it's already set up and you know that would be great uh, and if you don't have it in the source code you can submit it to uh, the, the place on github i think they just migrated it to libretro uh, core uh, branch tree whatever they call it on there and then i uh, used to be on pet rock bug but they they switched it recently so um you can add that and so that way in the future when you do uh, fresh installs uh, it will work by default um, but yeah, so you can see where it is, um, and then in order to edit it, all you got to do is type in sudo nano, and then type in the file. So mine is remember uh, is the USB gamepad.cfg. So USB gamepad.cfg. So that's the file right there, and as you can see, by default, it added the hotkey buttons. So uh, the hotkey button is eight, which is my select key, and then the exit emulator button is nine, which is my stock key. So if I hold down select and, and then start, it will exit out of the emulator. If I hold down select and left bumper, that will load. And the select and right bumper, um, that'll save. So that's like my number five button. So, and you can configure that for your own controllers. If it doesn't have that by default, you can add your own. Um, that's how it's supposed to look. Um, at least that's how it works with mine and it, it works fine. So, and then you'll just press control X and if you made changes then you'll save it. So, some people, maybe they don't like the auto-detect. Maybe you have a specific set of configurations for maybe more than one con uh, one player and you want to have um, that override your RetroArch controllers. So there's a way you can override the auto-detect that we've set up. Um, and so if you want to do that and have it a little more customized for your needs, then you'll go back to your home and type in sudo. Actually, I'll show you the, the place first and then we can edit the file. So cd uh, forward slash opt forward slash retropy forward slash configs forward slash, oh, we'll just do it at configs right here and ls. So you'll see it's got um, all the time. So these are all the emulators with uh, different configurations you can mod modify. So for example, if we went into cd, um, something like gb, so you see there's a retroarch.cfg file there. So if we go back a file, cd dot dot just makes you go back. Um, cd back into all. So this is, if you type in ls, you can see there's also a retroarch.cfg in there. Um, and this is a file you modify if you wanted to override all of the configurations for the different emulators um, that run uh, retroarch um, controls. So uh, unless you wanted to just override it for Game Boy, then you just do it in the configuration of the Game Boy folder. Um, but if we wanted to override it for all of our RetroArch emulators, then you do sudo nano retroarch.cfg. So we want to edit this file right here. And so way further down, there's a couple of things we'll want to look at. Um, if you want to speed up down to them, you press Control W and you can search for a specific keyword. So it's called Joypad. So I get you a little closer. Still, it's a little further down. Um, a little further down. Okay. So one thing to note is that if you want it to override the auto detect, 
um, you'll want to change this one that says in input auto detect enable uh, true. You'll want to delete true and uh, put false, and then that way it won't um, do the auto detect for the controller you configured. Um, and then this way it'll tell it to look at this file, and it might just do this file anyways, um, but it would be uh, good just to make sure by using that so you're not confused. Um, so if we go down a little bit further, keep going down further, this is the keyboard inputs, a couple more inputs, okay. So when you get down to here, it says joypad buttons. Um, by default, this stuff isn't there. I've already edited it, um, but this is, this is how I've edited mine. Um, it basically looked like the, similar to the configurations we had set up before. So this is uh, input player number one, joypad index equals zero. So it starts with the number zero. And then to add player two, you uh, increase this number here to one and then repeat all of these. But instead of player one, it would be player two. And then you can configure each one for um, the controls. So um, I forget things a lot. So what I did is I created a picture of my, my files. Um, so I don't know if you can see that, but um, I annotated a Super Nintendo controller just to remind me of which, which keys are what, so I know which ones I want to configure. Um, and you can figure that out with JS test or um, the RetroArch configs that we did earlier. So these are mine, this is how I set it up. Um, and I added the, the D-pad controls like left, right, up, down into this one, but usually they're a little further down here. Um, but I just added up into the top just to keep it all in the same spot. But as, so as you can see right here, um, inputting player two, I increased that zero from the previous one to one, and then changed all these to player two. And so that can have you can have all your custom things there. And I also added hotkeys to this one as well. Um, so you can use that as an example. I think I'll put it in the description below if um, you want to use that as your code, and then you can just modify it for your own keys. Um, but that's that's how you configure custom stuff for your own um, uh, for two-player or for um, if you wanted to override the default retroarch controls. Um, and then if you wanted to add a player three and four would be input number two and then number three. So it starts at zero. I don't know why, but um, yeah. So that's that's how you do that. Um, and then I think next I'll talk about the two uh, a couple of the other emulators that have their own configurations. Um, but this, this should be it for RetroArch, that should cover for everything you need to know for it. Um, yeah, so hopefully that helps you.